In Affinity Photo, you can create super colorful designs super quick using a brush stroke. Very basic brush stroke can be used to create this. So how to go about this? Let's just remove this layer. And the first thing to do, go over here, select the paintbrush tool. With the paintbrush tool, you can just go over here to brushes. And you can of course find loads of different brushes in here in window and brushes. And I'm just gonna select this one the Comic G Pen. And currently it's in black. You could of course set the color beforehand. So just double click and you can set the color. But if you don't set the color and you've got it in black, you can always quickly add layer effects or maybe an adjustment layer to modify that color. So let's just apply it. And now make sure you press B. So you've got the paintbrush tool selected, definitely selected there and apply. And just create something around a circle. Now you can very quickly, of course, manipulate this even more. Simply just simply just click on there and just maybe add some slight variations going off there. And also what you can do is you can use various filters to create all kinds of slight just variations. You can create all kinds of things going in and out. And I think that just creates really far more interesting brushes. But also what you can do, as I mentioned, use filters. Simply go to filters and then down here to distort and maybe use deform. Deform is my go-to filter for all kinds of distortion. Another option, maybe use liquify. Liquify is pretty good as well. That's one of the personas up here. You can use that with this design. Now, one thing to make certain before you go and do this is always make certain the move tool selected. Some of the tools, if you use it with the deform, just seem to make it they get in the way. So distort and deform, and then just add some pins just around the edge. Now you can add lots and lots of them. You could add only four or five, but just add them around the edge, and then just simply click here, and you can drag in and pull parts of this apart and distort it. So it doesn't have to be circular design. You can maybe go that way. Just click there again, just drag that in, and so on. You could build up all kinds of designs and click apply. So this design can now be turned into a brush stroke. But also you can add some effects to it before you do any more. You could of course go and create gradients, a whole range of different options possible with this if you use slight selections. But also layers panel, go down the bottom, make sure it's selected, go to effects. And you can do this of course with any layer. So just click effects and then just go down here to Bevan Boss or 3D. So 3D, I'm just going to set the radius, push that to about 14. And then maybe go for outer shadow. And you can set the radius, offset, intensity, etc. And you've got a nice 3D design very quickly. It's obviously not totally 3D. Click close. Once you've got that, you can now convert it into a brush stroke. If you go over to brushes, and just go to the right side menu and go down here, new brush and selection. That will work, but if I just do that, what happens, you'll notice just here, you can, if you look at the preview, it's not great because it's lost this 3D. It doesn't, for some weird reason, store it. So what I like to do, just go to layer and then rasterize. So rasterize and that will put it all, make sure you turn that off and rasterize all then becomes one single entity. And then we go to brushes, right side there again, just go down to new brush from selection. And now you can see straight away, you've got a slightly different brush, slightly darker, but what you can then do is just remove that one and go to the paintbrush tool and then go down back down here to the bottom one, the one we just created, image brush seven. You can always right click and you can edit, rename, but you also just to edit it, double click. So double click. And now you've got this, got the paintbrush selected. So you can apply it, just see what you've got straight away, something like that. Straight away, I've got a problem. I don't like wet edges, so let's just turn that off. And you can go to general and you can resize it, maybe make it slightly smaller, change the spacing and you get so Now the thing about this brush, more so than other ones where you've got like a shape, maybe a star or a circle, etc. you've you haven't got this sort of lovely structure, very abstract structure where it's sort of like warm. And of course you could create all kinds of unique brushes. You could sort of go in and out, 
create all, just pull it and drag it in all, to create all kinds of weird and li liquefied designs in the center. But once you've done that, you can also go down here, don't set wet, I'm just gonna set wet, I'll choose to off. Always prefer that. You can always reset it, of course. Go to dynamics, and you can change the size just so you can go like that. You might like to just keep it like that. No real need to think, but if you do, you can always go increase that. You can change that and you can go down to cyclic and then you can create some really weird and wonderful just by selecting different profiles, which you may decide as a brush stroke. That's pretty cool brush stroke. But you will obviously what happens, it also the spacing, you can actually see the like little ribs there. Well, I'm just gonna go for none. So just got it like that. Don't particularly want it for this example. But rotation jitter, you can push that. Now you get this sort of lovely sort of, I think a sort of, I don't know, melted sort of, I don't know, just sort of lovely, beautiful. And it's great for just creating a very quick background. So you want a red background or obviously any other color. Because now you've got this colorful design, you can always, of course, go and use the layer menu and the adjustments, create a, an adjustment layer for it. Or apply other effects. You can always go to filters and apply various color effects as well. There's a few. Or just use some of the color personas to, to recolor it. That's one option as well. Now what you can also do is you can go here. Rotation, you see I've pushed it up to 100%. Go to cyclic. And then you get this sort of twisty effect. Click there. And you can go through standard profiles. Maybe go for that one. And see thousands. Of and you can manipulate this. Just add a point there. And you can see as you do that. It will change that. Click up there and it will change that as well. Twist it in different ways. Now it's a pity you can't resize it. You can see as you change it, it does modify that design. So when you apply it now, you will see the result of that. And it will create a whole range of different designs just by changing that rotation jitter setting. What you can also do is, I quite like to do, is scatter Y. Like the jitter of the rotation, but I also like just having it so it goes up slightly. And that, the exact same, cyclic. And you can change it so it bolts and sort of bundles into a particular area more than, then it spreads out and then it sort of crunches in again, spreads out, etc. And you can change that again by cyclic and click on the profile. And you can see as you change it, you get different areas where it's really crunched in and other areas where it's more expanded out. And also you can go for the huge jitter. So you can just change that. And put it 100%. Go to random, go down to cyclic, and then you can see then you get the colors grouping. Click here, and again, you can go through the profiles, and you can see you get different color designs there. Once you're happy with that, click close. And then you've got your brush. And with that, you can just apply it. So now, as you apply it, you can see it goes up and down. You've got this lovely, sort of weird effect like that. Now, a weird thing about this sometimes, and I've just noticed, it doesn't seem to actually update. If we go there, close, it hasn't updated the actual thing. You can see the design there. That's one of the brushes that I created earlier. But you can see now, you get that sort of effect. And again, you can just modify that, just apply it, all kinds of different ways. You don't have to use a mouse, I've obviously got a mouse, or art pad, you can either, either way. Also, what you can do is, Go and use one of the other ones. Here's another one that I've created earlier. You can see the same sort of thing. Literally, it's created the exact same way where I've just used deform and distorted it and then apply it like that. The brush is slightly bigger. Say I can reduce it down, say it's 360, and you can see the result there. Thousands and thousands of different textures can be created very rapidly. Now you might think, well, that's not actually what I want. Let's just close that. You might not want that. You know, it's it's not really a texture. I mean, obviously you could use it as a pattern, so you can simply just go to layer, select the whole layer, and that can be at any time. New pattern layer from selection. And then you can resize it. And then you can see you've got your pattern design there. All kinds of beautiful, stunning, and you can still continue to apply your brush, of course. You can still go to B, press B on the thing, and you can then apply it, and you can see now that is repeated again as a pattern design forever outwards but it's still not particularly a pattern you might want to use it say like as a texture so let's just put it back 
If I put it back, that's the pixel layer. When if you convert it to a pattern layer, it becomes a pattern layer here. You can see now it's a pixel layer back to as it was before. But you can always apply some adjustments. Adjustments are always great. Simply just go to layer, new adjustment layer, and then down here, maybe to make it more like a texture, simply go for black and white. And of course, there's lots of others you can use. One I really love is always using threshold. That's always a great one. Or maybe use blend modes and things, a whole range of options. But black and white, let's just go black and white. And you can see then, black and white, you've got that, that effect. Move that out of the way so you can see the whole thing there. And you can still then just manipulate this. Another option, of course, is window and go to adjustments. Lots of great presets. You can simply select and apply. And you can then change this, move that around, and just change that, change that, and magenta. And of course, you've still got the options there, dark and multiply. So you can see you can run through, if you want to say like a slightly desaturated effect like that. Really great. And also lighter color and create some interesting sort of combinations between the two. And overlay hard light, you can run through very quickly. Difference and obviously saturate and that one saturation obviously down the bottom, luminosity, negation, average, reflection, and contrast. That's quite a nice one. Contrast negative. Let's just go for that one and close that. And then you've got that. And of course, at any point you can always go to layer and just down here to merge down. So it merges it all in to a single layer again. I could have used the merge within the adjustment layer as well. It's always a great option. But you can undo if you don't want that. You can always just delete it and then go, go to layer, new adjustment layer. Maybe use one of the others as well. Maybe go for gradient map. And you can see in gradient map, you can create some interesting designs there. And of course you can then manipulate this. Or as mentioned, simply just go to window and adjustments. And then you've got black and white, so you can bring there, you've got cold, warm, cold, maybe recolor, and so on. And okay, if you don't want them, simply just delete them via the layers panel. Always can remove them very simply by just clicking down there. And there's your end result, which of course you can also distort as well. Filters, they've got this, repeat deform, obviously left over from the brush. So apply repeat deform, filters repeat deform, and you can see you can create a variety of different designs simply by just manipulating that layer using that. Of course, sometimes the deform isn't particularly great, maybe not right, but it's a quick way of creating something. You think, oh, I can create something completely unique by just simply applying some one of these quick effects that I've used somewhere else as well. And that is how to create some really oddball color designs very quickly. Great for textures backgrounds, wallpaper designs, a whole range of different designs this could be used. Obviously the sky's the limit. If you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Always great to hear from you. A like or dislike, always appreciated. Bye.